breaking news. Samsung is busted, faking moonshots, but it's not just that. We go deep into this, take hundreds of our own photos, and we uncover something else that Samsung is lying about. We'll tell you all about it. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You need a presence on the web, right? And right now you're probably just using social media, but as you've seen, that can be taken away from you abruptly. And somebody else controls it. They can literally use your site to advertise your competitors and make money off of you. Take ownership of this. Get your own domain name. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. They make the process extremely easy and inexpensive. In fact, you can try it out completely free and see just how easy it is. You can sell stuff and not just the stuff Instagram wants you to sell, but whatever, including your own prints. Take appointments from clients, view detailed analytics. The whole process starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. When you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Right into our top story. Samsung has been advertising their S23 and S22 Ultra cameras with this amazing telephoto. And we just did a test. And in fact, those telephoto lenses are incredible. They blow away the iPhone. But what if it's not all real? What if it's not the lens doing the work? What if they're applying artificial intelligence or just straight up plastering pictures of the moon over the picture that you took? and making you feel like some kind of hero, doing the impossible, but with lies. Let's find out. First, let's look at Samsung's ad to find out why this is so relevant. You can see the triple array of cameras from the back of these smartphones and the wording epic nights are coming. And then there's this beautiful, like almost 3D looking chrome picture of the moon, but enhance. And we see image simulated for illustrative purposes. You're Advertising a camera by showing a picture that the camera did not take. That feels creepy. And maybe they got away with it by writing those tiny words in the corner, but it doesn't feel right. Here's something that feels really wrong. I break photos on Instagram or on Reddit, took some pictures of the moon and was shocked at how good they were and, well, didn't believe it. I break photos did something that I really respect. They attempted to reproduce it in controlled environments. They took a picture of the moon and used a Gaussian blur to make it very blurry. They displayed it on their monitor and then they took pictures of that monitor moon with their Samsung smartphone. And lo and behold, the picture came out more detailed than the original photo. It did the impossible. My first thought was, well, Gaussian blur can actually be undone. I did try the smart sharpen on the original image thinking the Samsung might just have been doing that, but I could not reproduce it. It still ended up being very blurry and nothing like what you see in the after photo here. What you see here is not even their first attempt. After this happened, they threw in more and more controls, including drawing a completely gray square into the moon. You can see the Samsung processed that gray photo and actually added some of the moon's texture to it. This tells us a lot. It tells us that the Samsung is not just taking a picture of the moon and overlaying it over the real photo, because if it was, you wouldn't see that gray square at all. But it also tells me it's not simply sharpening, it's not simply enhancing detail because there was no detail in that gray square. It added texture, but it did not add texture to the second gray square. By putting the Samsung through a series of controlled tests, we're able to get a view of what is actually happening inside the camera, something that Samsung has not been very direct about at all. And it tells us a lot about the process of photography. See, the process of photography is not just about results. Photography is about the truth. It's about being able to trust what you capture, what you see, what you share. And it feels bad to be lied to by your own camera. iBreak Photos did another test. You can see he took a picture of that same Gaussian blurred moon, but he put a half moon directly above it. This is interesting because the Samsung camera recognized the full shape of the moon and enhanced it. You see that on the right. The half of the moon did not trigger its algorithm. Thus, it did not receive the same enhancement. To me, this is conclusive, that Samsung is recognizing the moon and altering it, enhancing it, replacing it in one way or another. But I don't accept that. I don't accept anything I see on the internet unless I can reproduce it. And I completely failed. I completely failed to reproduce it. Wait, after I recorded that, iBreak Photos wrote back to me and he said, hey, 
I saw another YouTuber who said this doesn't work during the day. Apparently the smartphone actually looks at the time before it decides whether to let AI have at it at your moon photo. So I waited until night, you could manually change the time too, and took pictures again. And what do you know, it worked right away. I was able to replicate this about 100% of the time. But I did figure out there are some if then clauses before the AI is allowed to kick in. Maybe Samsung doesn't want somebody turning a streetlight or a headlight accidentally into the moon, which would be pretty embarrassing for them. So they restricted it as much as possible. You definitely can't do it at wider zooms. I tried it at 30x zoom, even 65x zoom, and it did not work. I had to go above that, like 80x zoom. You will know AI might work if you see the exposure of the camera change. If the moon is overexposed, AI is not going to work. If the camera makes everything dark so you can see the texture of the moon, that's an indication the Samsung has decided to give you a shot at the AI. On my S23 Ultra, it took about three seconds to process, so if you quickly flip over to review your photos, you can see the photo change in real time. It doesn't have to be a full moon. I did a half moon and it worked just fine, but I could not get a crescent moon to work. Now that I've been able to recreate the results for myself, we can look at them with a little bit more detail. We can see just how much detail the Samsung is adding here. It is almost completely getting rid of your original image, but as we saw from iBreak Photo's image of the moon with the gray square, it doesn't completely delete the original image. I don't even know why that is. Like what is left is definitely not your original photo. It is mostly something fake, but there is still some shred of that real photo in there and maybe they feel like that makes it okay. If you look at it compared to the original image, it is lacking a significant amount of detail, but more interesting than that is it is making up some new detail. You will find craters in the AI version of the moon that do not exist on the real moon. So it is making a fake, almost like moon. I don't know why they don't just stick a picture of the moon over it. After all, they could calculate exactly what the moon is going to look like at any point in time. They know where you are on the earth and what time it is. So just give me the accurate version of the moon because it's fake anyway. There's definitely nothing real about this. It's not made optically. Samsung's weirdly proud of using AI instead of just pasting an accurate version of the moon over it. Like AI optimization is not the same as just completely faking it, even though it's definitely less good. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. Here's my actual photo of the moon versus his enhanced photo by the Samsung. And if you can see, my photo of the moon is pretty good. And when I saw that, I thought that's pretty good for a smartphone, but it doesn't have nearly the level of detail that his did. In fact, mine looks really kind of wormy and kind of hairy. And I looked at that and I thought, oh, what are they doing with the weird processing and the sharpening? But what I didn't see was any sort of moon replacement. Samsung just wrote a whole long blog article in response without saying it was in response. And the process they detailed this, I actually believe this is what they should have come out with in the English language when they originally launched this entire system with the telephoto lens and the marketing campaign, because we all deserve the truth. But fake moons aren't Samsung's biggest problem. Another user, Expecto Pusio, <laughs> took these pictures of a building. And you could see the building on the right was taken the next day, and it looks like a normal building. But the building on the left, if you zoom in on that, the Samsung has turned the windows into some sort of writing. To me, it looks most like Korean, but nobody seems to actually recognize most of the characters, so it's probably just gibberish. And if you think about AI processing all of these images, this makes a lot of sense because AI will look at the lines in the windows and think, oh, okay, there's lines here. I should enhance those lines. But this is totally unacceptable. You could not be making up letters on top of windows. That is not the point of a camera. The fundamental purpose of a camera is to capture reality. Now, we uncovered some of this in our own tests of the Samsung S23 Ultra recently. Here's a test shot with the S23 Ultra 
And yes, it looks like garbage and it's super oversaturated because this is their JPEG 200 megapixel mode. And for some reason they process everything like crazy, just cranking it all up. But I found some bizarre artifacts when I compared it to photos from an actual real non-AI camera. Let's take a look. Here's a smartphone versus a professional camera with 240 megapixels. It's an unfair comparison, probably because the real camera is actually much closer, but you're gonna be surprised by this. Zooming away in, the smartphone looks better. The Samsung looks better. The AI has done a fantastic job of drawing the hair. The photo taken by the real camera shows lots of just noise and texture that's there in the print because the print is made with a bubble jet printer and it's not perfect, but the AI doesn't know how to model those flaws, but it does recognize hair and it recognizes these lines and knows how to emphasize it. And it actually does a better than real life job, but there's some flaws. Like first, Notice Chelsea's hair here. She's pulled some of it over the front. So this hair travels this way, but the hair behind it goes straight down behind that. But the AI didn't notice that. It drew all the hair back. So it actually changed her hairstyle. AI also provides inconsistent levels of detail because it will add detail for subjects that it recognizes, but it will not add detail for subjects that it can't model, like knuckles, apparently. Like this is Chelsea's human knuckle and the AI, couldn't handle it. So we ended up with significantly less detail. And in fact, the AI recognized the shadows here as lines. So it actually emphasized those lines and created detail that wasn't there, making her hands weird and creepy, not to mention Simpsons yellow. Once you start looking for it, you find lots of places where the AI imagined something that was not there. The signature here on the right, this is exactly how it exists in real life. But for some reason, it added these little lines. I don't even know what made it think that. Same here. But back to subjects it recognizes, like eyebrows. Look, these eyebrows actually look better, more detailed than the original eyebrow. Why? Because this original eyebrow, you can see the texture of the printing. The Samsung can't see the texture, but it can draw in eyebrows. But here's something funny. In the real picture, notice there's a flyaway running across the eye here. The Samsung didn't recognize it. It didn't model it. So that flyaway disappeared. All of this sucks, but good news, you can turn off this AI thing by turning off the scene optimizer, just an option in the Samsung camera. So we should all just relax, right? Well, I don't feel relaxed. Like photographers have been Photoshopping or dodging and burning the moon into landscape photos for a hundred years. At least this happened in the film era. So what's the big deal that Samsung decides to do it now? The big deal is we saw the marketing material, we've seen those pictures of the moon and we were impressed by it. Buyers assumed that that detail that they saw on the moon would be representative of other photos that they took with the telephoto lens, but no, it was just pictures of the moon. You cannot go out and take pictures of your kid's soccer game or a faraway bird and get similar levels of detail because those details were not captured by the camera. We don't really care to see the moon that much. We all know what the moon looks like. NASA's taking better pictures of the moon than any of us are gonna get with any terrestrial camera. We all know most marketing is complete BS, but these things cost like $1,500. That is a lot of money for people to save up and spend making decisions based on lies, okay? Samsung, we expect honesty, but also we expect you to do some decent testing and development before you start rolling this stuff out because this is not in a state that is ready to ship to customers. Artificial intelligence is not ready for widespread use in imaging yet. Right now, AI isn't intelligent, but it's more like artificial imagination. It seems to make stuff up kind of like a kid does, kind of like, well, our own brains do. If you try to recall a scene, you never remember it exactly like you saw it. In fact, you don't even see things exactly the way they are. Your eyes and your brain work together and mostly create a fictional version of the world around you that's good enough for you to navigate and avoid saber-toothed lions. So we really can't trust our own eyes, but up until this point, we've been able to trust cameras, at least our own cameras, right? Well, bad news, AI cameras are absolutely here to stay. This technology will allow people to produce images that they are more happy with. And though it's clearly not ready now, there's no rolling this back. And soon in the future, when you take pictures of the stars, it'll find a couple of landmark stars and then overlay some photo from Hubble that NASA has given them for free. And you will produce better photos than you possibly could with any real camera. Maybe the results even look more like what your eye saw, but we won't be able to trust it. And 
That's okay, because while AI cameras are here to stay, conventional cameras are here to stay too. We will always have a choice of using more traditional, less intelligent cameras that allow us to trust the results, that put more of the burden on the photographer and our expensive gear to get the results, and consumers will have a choice. And increasingly, consumers are going to choose the easier, smaller, less expensive camera and I'm okay with that because people get to tell their stories. They can literally get some finger paint and make the picture that they want to make. Hell, I've written books on Photoshop. I am not against creative use of technology and cameras, but please, camera makers, be honest with your marketing and show us how these images are actually produced so we know and we can share them honestly too. There is still one honest and true place in the world, manned by actual human beings there to help you. It's Squarespace, a tool for building a beautiful website, whatever you can imagine, whether it's for your photography portfolio, your drone website, or any type of business or personal project. Get your own custom domain so you're not at gmail.com anymore. You're a professional, right? People should take you seriously, and they will with a Squarespace. Start today at squarespace.com slash Tony. That gives you a free trial. You can set it up. Make sure you love it. And I promise you're going to be impressed. And when you do, use that coupon code Tony and that will get you 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear what you think about this. Do you care if the Samsung is pasting on a fake picture of a moon? Or is it different that it's using artificial intelligence to essentially produce the result of pasting on a fake picture? Are you bothered that the challenge of astrophotography has essentially been eliminated by artificial intelligence? Love to hear what you think. Bye.